everybody. Welcome to Weekly Trash, the safe place to cleanse your mind, body, and soul of all that trash you consume this week so you can consume some more tomorrow. I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I am so honored and thrilled to have one of the most influential people to ever sit in that chair, <laughs> Indy Blue, everybody. Oh, the applause, the applause. You have to have the applause. You can't not have it. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. I'm truly honored that you're my first guest. I manifested this. I prayed about <laughs> it. I don't know. I did a lot of things, but I got you here and I'm so excited because everyone has so many questions for you. You're yeah. kind of like the shit, but you know that, right? Like, you know, I, no, I feel like it's more like people just want the tea that too, but <laughs> you know, people really are obsessed with you. Like you are so influential and you're 26. Mm -hmm. Like I'm older than you. And that's so weird to me. Cause I feel like you are so wise. You've lived so many lives. You've done so much like I can't relate but I'm excited to like chat your ear off yeah, so let's go here on weekly trash we do dumpster deep dives we today's dumpster deep dive is sponsored by Lissy skincare Lissy skincare was created by master esthetician Lizzie Cotter her lifelong struggle with acne led her to start her own brand with a single product her mandelic serum what makes this product different from others on the market is its ability to treat all types of acne the serum has been proven to treat cystic fungal, hormonal, and inflamed acne. Many customers of Lissy Skincare who have spent years using prescription medications with no luck claim that this one product has truly cleared their acne and changed their skin for the better. Not only is it amazing at treating acne, but it treats hyperpigmentation, texture, improves the overall tone and appearance of the skin. It is safe for all skin tones, skin types, and even pregnancy and breastfeeding safe making it accessible for anyone with skin. It truly is a miracle product. The serum has received hundreds of five-star reviews and has helped thousands of people clear up their stubborn acne. Customers have labeled this serum as magic, and it truly is. Lissy's brand recently launched a vitamin C serum, which is an amazing product that helps brighten, plump, and hydrate skin. Lissy Skincare customers rave about her products, and if you don't believe me, you can check out the hundreds of five-star reviews yourself. I personally have been using it for almost two years now, and I cannot live without it. It is my go-to, especially if I feel breakouts coming. It's usually because I haven't been using it religiously, and so I make sure to get back on that Lissy train because it is that good, okay? You need it. If you want to clear glowing, healthy skin, you can use code WEEKLYTRASH10 for 10% off your order on LissySkincare.com. Again, the code is Weekly Trash 10 for 10% off at LissySkincare.com. L-I-S-S-Y-S-K-I-N-C-A-R-E.com. Thanks, Lissy. Go deep into who these people are. And so we're going to start kind of from the beginning. Yeah. I know most of these answers. I'm going to play a little dumb, <laughs> but where'd you grow up, Indy? <laughs> Um, I am born and raised in Utah, Linden. Utah girl. Yeah, Utah girl. Where'd you go to high school? Timpanogos. Timpanogos. Mm -hmm. And you would have graduated, what, 2014? 15. 15. Yeah. Wait, so I'm like two years older. That's, ew. Where did you go? I went to Alta. Okay. Talks fly together. <laughs> um, okay. And you have two brothers? Or th I have three brothers three and one brothers, sister. One sister. Yeah. Family's still all close-knit. Yeah. And yeah. they still all live in Utah, right? Yeah, my brother's, um, he's following in young Indie Blue's footsteps, and he's he's going to Europe for a little while. So, is um, he going to film it? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's not He's not that that type. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, it's it's crazy. We're just like, all my siblings are grown up. My sister yeah. just got asked to homecoming. <gasps> what? She was a baby in your videos. I know. Because that's the thing. I have followed you for yeah like nine years yeah. maybe so I feel like I've seen your whole life and yeah, I know totally. so much about you but I never even had met you but mm -hmm. I know like everyone in your life <laughs> yeah. so I love that they're like all growing up and everyone's yeah, still close so crazy so how did you get started in video and photography and all of that because it was in high school right or was it before then um it was actually before I I've always just been an artist in the sense of I mean I think all little kids are, you know, they're oh, just sure. so naturally good at expressing themselves through dancing or making up a play or um, I would write poetry, you know, when I was little, 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 
And Not so everyone does that, by the way. You <laughs> yeah, are. That one might be a little um, it's unique, a niche. But I've loved um, just art in all forms. And video and photography kind of obviously came naturally. Um, but my mom, she was always big into video and photo, but more of just like a documentarian kind of way. Yeah. Um, like it wasn't her talent or necessarily her skill it was just like she filmed everything of us growing up um and How so cool. yeah so cool kind of jealous i mean i'm it's it's crazy like when in kindergarten you know when you do like your birthday show and tell with like a poster yeah. my mom would make a video and Aww. that was the craziest thing and so you know my siblings and i we have our lives so documented that um i mean it's it's just kind of something that I picked up on, I think, through yeah. her. Um, and she would she would make videos for our birthdays. And she would compile the footage from the year before and make it a, a little montage. And we'd all watch it on our birthdays. So I think there was a storytelling aspect because that's kind of the thread through um, all of these little art projects I would do. I was always really good at finding the story. Yeah. And kind of seeing my mom do that, I think um inspired me and so I started filming probably when I was like I don't know 10 11 like really young but just um fun stuff just picking up my mom's camera and then as I grew older and um got into junior high like that that became like my passion um was just filming filming random videos even if it was like the Spanish project I would do it all I would direct it I would produce it I would edit it um and just family trips Christmas I just um something about finding the story really came naturally to me I think yeah yeah well your life is a crazy story it almost is unbelievable like (laughs) when you when I was making all my questions I'm like okay this happened we got to talk about this but like also like (laughs) this happened and we have to talk about this it was just like thing after thing after thing I'm like this girl you need to write a book (laughs) um but so your mom was into film and photography. When did you get like your first like fancy schmancy camera? Um, I was, I think I was sixteen because it was this. It was the first Christmas Jackson and I were together, um, and I remember like it was such a big deal. And we went up to Sundance and I like used it and, um, yeah, that was monumental. Uh, yeah. It's was it a learning curve for you or did everything just come very naturally when it came to like how you edit yeah. and like the filtering and all those things that come with film. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I always say like my, my level of understanding was, and honestly still is so basic, like very basic camera functions. I'm not like super versed in even ton- like settings and yeah. F stop and all that. Like I really, um, I know how to get good lighting. I know I, I know the basic settings yeah. and, and same for editing. And so um, as I grew older, that was a point of insecurity at times. Just like, yeah. oh, I like I need to learn. I need to, right. um, you know, hone my craft. And um, but I think for me, it's such a passion because it it's just like natural. It came really naturally to me. And I think um I think I just have an eye for it, you know. That's, oh, you do. And I don't know if you can teach that. No. Um, you know, people always say, like, the eye, the eye. And and for me, that's kind of how it feels. It just feels really natural to um, be behind a camera. Like, I just know where to look. I know where to look. I know um, what's going to look good. I know I can see the end product in my mind, like, while it's playing out in front yeah. of me. Um, and so... I think I've grown um, comfortable in in not being just this expert um, videographer and editor and knowing all of the tricks and settings. I I think what I'm confident in is just like kind of like my mom, just just documenting, you know, and knowing how to just capture emotion in real life. So when did you start liking being in front of the camera because not only are you good behind but you're also extremely talented in front of it (laughs) so when did that happen Uh, I mean probably it's probably how it started honestly because I was like 
such a little fame whore as a child. Like, fame? I just, like, and I think What's I... What's your sign? <laughs> Gemini. I should know this. You're surprised. Like, oh, <laughs> Gemini. Uh, okay. So, I, I, I probably wanted to learn how to use a camera so I could, like, show other people how to film me. Yeah, Cause, like, for sure. Because no one knew how, and I'm like, this sucks. Like, <laughs> get it together. Um, I need my good face, my good <laughs> angle. Come on. Yeah, and so... I think like as a little girl, I was so obsessed with doing photo shoots with my friends. Like we would just get dolled up and go take photos on our mom's nice cameras. And I loved that. Like uh, I'm just such a child of the internet age because even before the internet, I was like taking hundreds of pictures of myself and just like. Just to have. Yeah. Just to like stare at it at night. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just go through on the little (laughs) camera. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, I think um, like I said as I grew older, I realized that, like, I actually do feel more comfortable behind the camera just because I, I feel like I just have that eye. Um, Probably more control. More control. Yeah. I just have more control. Um, But yeah, it's, it's so funny. People will say that, like, I'm good in front of the camera. And, and I just genuinely think I have done it for so long that like I know I know to spin and I know to like I know what looks good and it's it's usually just like a lot of movement or um filming someone while they're having a conversation with someone so you're getting real so um because it's kind of awkward to be so awkward in front it's so I mean I still feel awkward um I think I just have the advantage of like guiding people and posing people so much that like I kind of know what to do you know yeah does Jackson like being in front of the camera? No, he no. hates it. <laughs> yeah. And he's so beautiful. I mean. You I both are beautiful. Oh, but so. I always think of like family pictures of my family and they're so like oh, yeah. not candid. Like we're both <laughs> smiling. I'm like pinching my kid to get him to shut up. And I'm like, these suck. Yeah. And then I see everyone else that's like beautiful like you guys that just does these beautiful photos. And I'm like, I wish <laughs> we did that. I've trained I've trained everyone in my life so That's well. what everyone says. That's what Kylie Kadich said when she came on. She's like, I trained my oh, husband. Yeah. Well, the key with the husbands is you have to just catch them off guard. Right? Yeah. You know, like you straight up have to, like, they're like a baby. Like, you can't let them know you're taking a photo For or sure. else they'll, like, shut down. You're like, okay, go hide behind the bushes yeah. when he yeah. smiles. Like, get that. Yeah. Get that. <laughs> So you got, you've always been into this kind of stuff. What was the career path you wanted to go into? Did you want to go into film, do like more like short film, Sundance mm-hmm. stuff, big director stuff or weddings? Like what was yeah. your end goal? Um, yeah. I mean, film filming and being in the film industry was, um, as a teenager, like that was my pipe dream. I, I It still is kind of. Yeah. Um, I, weddings were never, um, on my mind or something I wanted to do um that just kind of fell into my lap yeah um I I was still just kind of filming fun videos um and I didn't have any plans for after high school everyone was graduating and I had nothing (laughs) nothing to do yeah Um, same (laughs) can relate and a friend of mine which this is so Utah she was just a year older than me um, she asked me to film her wedding. So I was like, I think I was 17. Yeah. And um, that it was exciting. Uh, I was terrified. Yeah, I would be really a nervous. A wedding is so, it's just the stakes it's, are so high. Yeah, like it's everyone's and I'm like, dream life right there. You're filming yeah, it. And I'm like, you want my first wedding? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but actually, I called up Kenna Bangader. Um, and like, all credit to her, she is like, she started the video she started oh, videography yeah. in utah yeah. she really did oh, i followed both of you since the yeah. beginning so i know <laughs> and I know. We, we had mutual friends and we were online friends but um that's like what that's how we became friends i was like yeah. can you help me film this wedding and she's great she like she's she didn't gatekeep anything she um she let me use all her nice equipment showed me showed me the ropes helped me with clients so um i'm yeah so thankful for her for that but it just kind of spiraled from there like once you do one wedding I remember five people at my first wedding asking for my business card and then my next wedding was from someone at that wedding so it's it was cool in that way like it it was not something I was intending on doing yeah and I knew I wasn't going to be a wedding videographer forever Um, I just saw it as a job I saw it as um, an opportunity to expand my knowledge and get new experience in film 
but I always did kind of see it as like a stepping stone. I always for thought sure. it was temporary. For sure. And then you started making your viral summerly videos mm-hmm. and you'd go on these trips. I'm, I'm assuming you paid for the trips with the wedding mm-hmm. videography money mm-hmm. because those are kind of expensive trips. How did you come up with the ideas of your videos for those travel videos? Like was was the plan always to get all your friends together and we're going to make people wish they were here <laughs> because this was epic? Or was it just kind of like spur of the moment, I'm going to capture footage and then I'll upload it? Um, it actually started kind of um, back to my mom. She'd make these birthday videos, right? Yeah. So I started doing that with everything I filmed throughout the whole year and doing these year-end videos. Yeah. Um, and no one was watching them, but it was kind of, again, I'm very sentimental. Um, and I just, it was kind of just like for me yeah. and to like look back on, cause yeah. I have all these videos from my childhood that my mom made and I kind of wanted to just continue on. Um, and just, I film so much, like why not just kind of put it all into a little nice video um, to represent my year. So that's actually kind of how it started, and um, the weddings, yeah, like you said, were it was the best gig because they, you, you know, you book weddings so far in advance, um, yeah, obviously, and then to book the date, you have to put down a down payment, and I didn't know any of this, right? So at that time, I was charging seven hundred dollars for my weddings, which felt astronomical right and now it's like seven grand yeah that's so <laughs> I was charging seven hundred dollars and I remember getting my first check for seven hundred dollars or no I think I got 350 because it was half and I was like I'm rich like I'm rich and yeah and that was crazy because I didn't have to work for another year like my job wasn't for yeah. a year but I had this little bit of cash and so I wasn't in school um I was working at Swig Hell yeah. And What's your swig order? Um, Sprite with blue coconut. What's I don't even know what they're called. I don't, I don't drink soda, so I couldn't even Really? Tell you. Sprite's like my only thing that I kind of like, mm-hmm. but like brown sodas, like really? Dr. Pepper or Coke, <laughs> you can't. They're too sugary. Yeah. But Sprite, I'm like, okay. Um, That's funny. You worked at Sprite. I, know. I love Such that. Such a Utah girl. I love that. But yeah, I had all this time. I, I just had all this time, and then I had money, and I'd always wanted to travel um just didn't really have anyone to travel with and so did you travel growing up was your family travelers no um no all my brothers played baseball so our vacations were Idaho and St. George yeah I was gonna say (laughs) places no Arizona in there I don't know if we ever did maybe Arizona's not I don't know why I thought it would be I don't know if we were in that tournament circuit gotcha gotcha gotcha. (laughs) um but yeah no I never traveled growing up but it was like from as early as I can remember like I had a Paris themed bedroom the travel channel was my favorite oh, yeah. show oh, like yeah. I was um obsessed with the idea of seeing the world and doing that after I graduated and so all of a sudden I kind of like had the opportunity and I yeah. was like okay um and I went to Hawaii by myself for like two weeks wait by yourself yeah so <laughs> the story is Tristan um he was still in high school Tristan my best friend he was still in high school and he was living in Hawaii because his um family was his family's from there. So um, I had nothing to do. So I was like, I'm going to come stay with you for a few weeks. And last minute, his dad had some health issues and they had to fly to Utah. Um, and so I wasn't going to go. I was just going to cancel my flight. Yeah. And last minute, I was like, <laughs> I'll <Okay>. go. <laughs> Literally, fuck it, I'll go. Yeah. And I think what hit me was like how much easier it was than I thought. Yeah. Like, just traveling in general just seemed... I mean, everyone does it now, but you have to remember this was 10 years ago. Like... Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, 17-year-old girls were just, like, going places. Like, right. country to country. Um, And so, I think going to Hawaii kind of, like, lit this fire in me. Like, oh, I can do this. This is, like... Yeah. This is easy. Like, it's, it's fine. I slept on my friend's couch. I walked to the beach every day. Uh, like, it was... And it was just um, it li- liberating. Yeah. Because I was like, wait, I can do this. Yeah, for sure. You probably learn a lot about yourself, too, when you travel alone. Totally. Like, yeah. just you. And that was, like, my first trip, which is crazy. That's crazy. So then your trip that, to me, seems like the most memorable is when you stay at that hotel 
with two of your friends. It was Tristan and who else was it? Was it Paris or yes. Milan? It was where you said that you called the hotel and like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was Tristan and, and our friend Sarah. Yes. And um, I think bloggers were doing the traveling um, paid thing. I don't know. At that time, I thought like we invented it. Yeah. Because I was like, wait, what if we just start like calling a bunch of hotels, emailing a bunch of hotels? I have like the smallest following. I think I probably had like 30,000 followers. I was hey, like, and that's, that's cool. I'm at 10. You're like, <laughs> like mm, yeah, 30K is so <laughs> little. Like, no, you. I think at the time, I, and I mean, it just seemed like we were, yeah, it seemed like nobody. so silly. Yeah. Like, this is never going to work. Yeah. And one hotel answered, and it happened to be the Townhouse Gallery, which is like the most iconic hotel. Insane. In Milan. Like, it's so recognizable. It's in this mall, and... I mean, that was so, that's such a core memory for me because looking back, I'm like, oh, like, yeah, hell yeah, we should have been there. Like, yeah, like look at influencer marketing now. It's like, that's totally, that's the world we live in. And we were thinking that we were like scamming these people, <laughs> like we're getting one by them. But um, that just kind of gave us this little, like this boost of, of confidence and like, um, we can like we have something to offer yeah and we would offer them the craziest stuff we'll be like we'll make five videos we'll post a blog uh, an instagram a snapchat like we'll do a tour like we'll name our first kid after you <laughs> like really. anything and everything yeah. we'll just give us a place to sleep yeah and but you're scamming them like yeah, for sure exactly yeah. like we'll give you the whole world but like <laughs> somehow you're getting the bad end of the stick yeah. here so out of all of the the trips that you went on which one was by far your favorite in that time of your life yeah uh it's it's impossible to choose um that one was just like the most memorable I think yeah um it's, it, it was so life-changing um anytime I've gone to Europe and just like kind of bounced around has just been incredible like we we happened to be in Paris when they won the world cup when France won the yes. world cup just happened yes. to be there. That video of yeah. you. And yes. there's just people in the streets right in front of the Eiffel Tower. And um, so there's just, yeah, things like yeah, that. Your life I just, is just insane. I, I just, yeah, it was a fun time in my life. So then you kind of start your brand. Mm -hmm. And when you started it, I believe, wasn't it called Indie the Label? Mm -hmm. So you have this brand. And when it was Indie the Label, the shirt said, um, what did the shirts say? They, why am I blanking right now? You had t-shirts, right? For any of the label? Yeah. I love you say it back. Yes. Yeah. Why was I thinking it was text me when you get home? <laughs> wrong one. Wrong one. And when did you decide, just kidding, this is going to be Lonely Ghost and we're going to blow this shit up. This is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. How did that transition go? Yeah. Um. So initially before Bronson and I connected, I had been approached by a few people just kind of um, pitching me like, we'll yeah. st like, we'll start a brand for you. We'll um, handle all the, the sourcing and we'll do the warehouse, we'll do the shipping. Um, we just, and we'll just have you be the face of it yeah. and like market it and all this stuff, which to me was like, sign me up. This sounds, this sounds amazing. Um, I'd always wanted to work in fashion. That was like another one of my little dreams as a kid was, to have a store, to yeah. just work in fashion or to be a fashion designer um, in any capacity. And so I was just jumping at the chance. And um, this brand I was going to work with, they um, were encouraging me to pick a name. And it was like, I can't remember the details or the situation, but I had to pick it like fast. And... I came up with Indie the Label thinking I could change it later, but I remember they were pretty, um, they were encouraging me to use my name, to play on my name. And from day one, I, I really didn't want to do that only yeah. because I like would never wear a shirt that says my name on it. <laughs> yeah. Like Indie the Label. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, that's what I hated about merch, merch right? Yeah. Um, like that just always seemed so mind-blowing to me about the merch thing was this was such a lucrative business of these youtubers like making millions a million dollars off of like I always use the example of like Jake Paul yeah. and Logan Paul yeah. I'm just like find a 
designer like any literally anyone just says jake paul yeah <laughs> like, it, it. i'm just yeah so that was kind of the idea was like i'm down to make merch because there's yeah. people that want to buy it but like what if we just made it cool and like kind of elevated it into just its own brand yeah so early on i knew i didn't want to be i didn't want to have my name i kind of got like roped into that um Bronson and I start working together. We're just kind of going with the name. And then um, after about six months, I just, it was kind of weighing on me. Like, um, and, and again, like there's just only so much you can do with Indie the Label or yeah. it just, it just wasn't right. And I saw this graffiti in, I think I was in Ireland and I saw this graffiti with a ghost and I was so used to like taking pictures of ghosts because that was our logo. And, um, so I took a picture of it and I was like looking at it later on the train and it it was said lonely underneath. And I just like, I was like, lonely ghost. I'm like, that sounds cool. And I was like, we should do a collection, like the lonely ghost club. That's what I wanted to do. And the more I started thinking about it, it was just like, wait, we need to change our name and redo everything. And I was so scared to tell Bronson about it because we had done all this paperwork and we'd been going at this for six months and he was just like, yeah like absolutely that fits yeah for sure which now I mean it's such a good name it's yeah so it's such good. a good name yeah it's so good so when you first started and it was you and Bronson how did you finance that it was just us two just every penny you made yeah going straight like I remember I remember we um we paid for like a logo design yeah and it was like five hundred dollars and I had to Venmo him half and I just remember being like my really paying for this like 250 dollars <sighs> please make me rich like yeah. this is did you go into it to be rich like have you always wanted to have that like financial gain like I want to be not rich. really not really like no I wanted to be famous yeah not rich not rich which is so funny because now I'm the exact opposite but right I think that's maturity I think <laughs> as you get older you're like actually I don't want fame I uh, want to be rich yeah but I think and this is what I'll say because I do get nervous about like putting out this message like look at me I did all this and you can do it too with a little bit of hard work and it's just like so much of how I got here was like straight up luck. Yeah. Privilege, luck, right place, right time. And I'm not saying it's not possible, but I I just also think I want to put it in perspective for people that, like, um, a lot of these influencers and people you look up to, like, they had a good head start and, like, oh, not yeah. to compare yourself to something. And I think um, along the lines of on that advice, I think in terms of my success, in terms of my money, um, or any really, like, exciting, cool, great opportunity I've had in my career or just my life, when I like look back and I trace, I pinpoint these moments in my life, these opportunities all came when I was doing something I just really like to do. Yeah. And so I think the reason I say that is like, yeah, it was never my intention to um, film weddings. That made me a shit ton of money. That was never my intention to like make film weddings and like make a ton of money. But I was just filming videos, like doing what I loved. And then my friend asked me to film her wedding. And through that, I was able to be able to afford to travel places. I wasn't getting paid for those videos. Right. I wasn't monetizing them even. But through that, I started getting all of these opportunities. Through that, I built this like audience that was really just based off of like connecting over my blogs and my writing and that led me to having this massive ready-made audience when like I was ready to start a brand. So I think when I look back on my career and like the things that went right for me, it was, it all came from a point of like following something I was passionate about. And so um, Lonely Ghost for me, it was always, always just like exciting and like pure, just like passion. Yeah, you got to put your creativity yeah. into something. So what was your creative process when designing the stuff? The sweatshirts, the shirts, the phone cases, all the things. How did you, how do you go about that process? Um 
in the beginning, it was, yeah, it was just me and Bronson. So it was, like, I Love You Say It Back came from a text Jackson sent yeah. to me. I think a lot of things in my in our brand are just little call outs to things in my life um and I reference my blog a lot I reference yeah. my I'll, I'll just kind of read through my blogs and pick out quotes that sound good um and now we have obviously we have a team of designers and we have um, a marketing team and so I have help on that but I think for me um when it comes to like when it comes to a new collection for example yeah i think my first point of inspiration is just kind of looking at my where i'm at with my own life um like we're doing a we're doing a hoodie in a few months and we're using is it okay to be okay which is a title of like one of my blogs yeah. and so i think those hit the hardest those drops because there is um there's personal connection there's there's like a lot of context behind it there's a story behind it and it's not just like um something we just threw on because it sounded good it's like to someone walking down the street and seeing your shirt like yeah but I do think people I do think people care I I do think there's a group of people that care and appreciate the the kind of depth of a lot of what we do there absolutely is because you wouldn't be as successful as you are if if people didn't care so what are you as involved in the process now that you've grown so much or have you kind of taken a step back where it kind of can build itself and Mm -hmm. like you said you have people who work for you that do the marketing the designs those kind of things so how involved are you right now um well yeah in the beginning it was just us two and so it was It was genuinely my hand in every single thing. Um, And I do think that's a part of the magic, right? Because you have a lot of influencers and celebrities um, and these faces of brands who, um, you know, they show up for photo shoot day and they post what they got to post and that's it. They don't even know the product. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't really know the specifics, but I do think, like, there is this element of it being so um, personal and me just, like, having so many um, little details of my life in there and knowing um, what's going on and being particular about captions even or or colors or our feed. Um, I think now where I have a bigger team, it's so nice. Like, it's it's so nice to have to do everything yourself, you know? Um, but I do pressure yeah like take it off just a little bit and our team is incredible um I do um I do have a hard time um with my with being the public face and with my position only because yeah like you said it's always been my goal to kind of move away I I think having a a face of a brand is um it can be so powerful because it's been with mine but it's also dangerous, and I've I've sensed that from day one. And and that's it's when our brand does good, it's it all falls on me, even yeah. for stuff that I'm not responsible for. And then when anything goes wrong, it's all falls on me. Oh yeah, even if I'm not even remotely responsible for it. So in this age of cancel culture, like it is just dangerous to rely on a person yeah. to um, putting you on the pedestal of you have to yeah. be perfect in every single way yeah I feel a lot of pressure from that and so this year I have taken like a huge step back I I've had um I've kind of just rethought my relationship with social media as a whole and um had to kind of step back and like trust that my business can be okay without me promoting it online or physically being in charge or involved um getting more comfortable being more behind the scenes um yeah. so it's it's good though it's it's exciting I think at this point I really get to dive into the business side of things and um maybe get back to more of the creative stuff yeah. like filming I like I really want to get back into um the video side and just being creative with video and styling shoots and um blogging it's really fun for me that I get to kind of merge 
those um, passions of mine, like writing blogs or coming up with lines for t-shirts, um, that's something I've loved to do my whole life is write. And so the fact that I get to do that in business is it's really exciting. Well, I loved your blog post that you did. You posted it on your story. I read every single oh. little clip. <laughs> And, you know, you talk about how you've just shown so much of your life through social media. It's this window into your life. And when you mix that with business, like your personal life and business, I'm sure that gets extremely messy and complicated. Yeah. And there needs to be a boundary for your mental health, I'm yeah. sure. So where do you see yourself with Lonely Ghost in 10 years? And what do you, where do you see Lonely Ghost in 10 years? Or do you not think that far in advance? Um. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. No, it's so squeaky. Is. It's fine. I don't think... It's hard to think that far in advance. Like, I've had Lonely Ghost for five years, which is such a trip. And even, like, like I would have never been able to predict this trajectory. Yeah. And so um, it's just exciting because it feels so, like, like, it could be anything. Unknown. But I think I – as far as Lonely Ghost goes, there's just – we're in an exciting spot just because um, building it to here has been so hard and it's taken so long, but we're kind of at this spot where um, people are taking us seriously as, as far as like connects and contacts and um, places where we can open stores yeah. and um, just collaborators. We're, we're kind of having a lot more opportunity now. So we have room to pick and choose whereas before it was kind of just like take what we can get yeah so I think I'm just excited to um work with really cool brands that we love and open more stores I would love to open a store in Japan or oh cool don't go overseas um I would love to I just anything open a coffee shop or have an exclusive kids line kids store um I think We've just done such a good job of creating this community and this um, branding. Like, our yeah. branding is so solid that um, it's just going to be exciting to see, like, what we can go. We yeah. have so many different Well, lanes. and I feel like you've probably had a lot of pinch me moments while building this business. I mean, for me, watching you with Kourtney Kardashian was... <laughs> insane like that was crazy that was one for sure yeah like how out of all of them how do you even pick a favorite um yeah like the the big ones are obvious right like yeah. that um we were in Chicago last week for uh, a pop-up for yes. Jenny's ice cream and there's you know hundreds of people in the hottest day of the year yeah that want to meet you and I was like yeah that's really like my brain breaks yeah and I cannot compute <laughs> yeah but for me I think the way I really like to find a pinch me moment that like hits me and sticks with me for a long time is just something and they're, they're always really small yeah but it's something that like would make my younger self like stoked about um and like what comes to mind is just um my sister and and people in my dms a few months ago just sending me the yearbooks of junior high and high schools and it's just like top brands <laughs> nike zara h&m lonely ghost Amazing. and like if you would I, I worked on the yearbook team yeah in a junior high like yeah. I, I had to edit those pages of the top fashion trends of the year and to think that i would have a brand that was just like so in the zeitgeist that it's across the country like all of these kids like favorite wow. thing to wear to school like I that's a pinch me moment um I just it's hard to comprehend I bet the reach you know why what is it about Gen Z that you think just is so obsessed with Lonely Ghost because everyone's obsessed with it but I swear my sister would like she wanted to be here right now she's like, can I come like she's 20 and she's just like obsessed like yeah. high schoolers only wear lonely ghosts like that's all they wear yeah what what do you think it is because your branding isn't necessarily catered no. to them whatsoever but something about it just like hooks them and mm -hmm. everyone's obsessed what do you think it is um 
I, I think there's a few things. I think, I mean, like I just listed, Nike, Zara, H&M, yeah. you know, those are like great brands. Those yeah. are like, like when we were shopping, like we didn't know, there wasn't like boutiques and like all of these yeah. streetwear brands and like how we have Instagram now and there's so many options. It was like you had Nike, you would go to the outlets and you had yeah. Nike, Zara and yeah. H&M and like that's where you shopped. Yeah, Aeropostale. Yeah, exactly. And I think maybe there was just this need for that age group. And and yeah. I, I do think a lot like the younger side, like junior high age, that's something Bronson and I talked a lot about in the beginning because I have a I had, my sister was probably 13, 12 yeah. at the time. His daughter was the same age. Yeah. And there's nothing cool for them. Yeah. And that's kind of like this, I think, a gap in the market where everything is like either too little kid or too like mature adult. Mature, um, showing a lot of skin. And like, yeah. they just want to wear big hoodies. Like, yeah. they literally just want to wear big hoodies to school. That's what I wanted to wear. For sure. In junior high. Um, and so I think maybe that's. Gen Z is kind of um, grouped in with that where they're just they're just sick of Aeropostale. I don't know. <laughs> is Aeropostale even a thing anymore? I feel like it had like a comeback. Or was that American Eagle? No, it was Aeropostale actually. Hollister, Hollister. Hollister is gone though. It's Abercrombie's just Abercrombie now. I have no idea. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, you don't have to. They're know. all coming back. It's the, we're bringing back the 2000s. I know, isn't that crazy? It's great. Like <laughs> the fashion trends, I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about friendships because obviously friendships are extremely important to you. If you follow Indie Blue, you know, like <laughs> you are the queen of friends and your your videos show the love that you guys have as friends. You've also had friend breakups and because, you know, you're indie blue on Instagram, people notice these, these friend breakups. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you've had those friend breakups? Do you feel like they've all kind of been for the same reasons or has every single one been for a different reason? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, on some level, yes, there's like, there's definitely a thread of, um behaviors and patterns that kind of have I've kind of got me in a lot of the same situations so I definitely have gotten to do a lot of self-reflection on like my abandonment issues or my attachment issues or um kind of my insecurities and friendships yeah but at the end of the day like no like friendship (laughs) breakups are just like part of life yeah and they happen for a million different reasons um People grow apart. People move away. Um, people fight, have stupid fights about stuff that has nothing to do with each other. Yeah. And just what to do with the shit that you're both going through. I just think life happens and it's not always as scandalous and dramatic as people make it to be. Um, I just think that that's something I, pr- I think I used to have a lot of shame about. Um, and I think I, it's kind of projected onto me from people who don't like me and people who criticize me. Yeah. Um, a lot of guilt and shame, like why can't she keep any friends or whatever. Right. Um, and I think it just hit me one day, like, am I not allowed to have a fight with a friend? No, and has not. <laughs> have you never like? <laughs> yeah, no. Have, like, I'm just. It just hit me how ridiculous it was. I'm like, is that really problematic? Yeah. To um, exist as a human with character flaws for sure am I allowed to have flaws like let's say every single one was completely my fault 100% my fault and like I'd, as a result of my abandonment issues and attachment issues and all of these things that would make me have an issue in a friendship like should we kill her <laughs> right <laughs> should we Are sue we that me pissed? I don't understand that I'm like yeah just because I and I I don't understand um that aspect of it like because just because I'm publicly doesn't mean I should be held to a higher standard than anyone judging me because I promise you everyone judging me has had a friendship breakup oh we're all human a falling out with a friend a stupid fight with a friend um and and so that's that's kind of helped me just um take a lot of the shame out of it and just realize that 
life happens. No matter, you can be the most mature, emotionally intelligent, well-rounded, balanced person and life is still going to happen and you will still have issues with people, whether that's your coworkers, your friends, your family, your romantic relationships. Um, it's just life. And I, um, but I will say that I do understand why people are curious. Yeah. I totally get it because um, I have been so public with these people and these friends and they have been such a part of my life. And then to just stop posting with them or to unfollow each other, I get why people are like, what happened? Um, you know, do you, do you watch Vanderpump? Yes. Duh. Yeah. But it would be like Scandal happening. Yeah. And they just don't tell us nothing's covered. And the next season they come back and Ariana and Tom aren't talking. And we're just like, okay, but why? Yeah. You're not married. What's going we on? We watched your whole marriage and now. Well, I guess they weren't married. They were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Whatever. Well, they were technically. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. It would be like, okay, what the hell? Yeah. What did, what happened? We've been watching this whole time and yeah. now you're like, something happened. So I get it. I totally get it. Um. I just think I had to come to terms with the fact that what's tea and gossip for everyone else is my real life. Yeah. Like I am actually the one that's dealing with it and feeling the pain and feeling the grief um, in the absence of that close friendship. And, and it's not, you know, and, and those friendships go so far beyond gossip to me. Yeah. You know, they, these are people that I love and, and I think, um, when you're on the other side of that grief and pain, you get perspective and the perspective is just like, oh, the love was never gone. Yeah. Ever. And so for me, I'm just on the other side now, you know, I'm, I'm on the other side where I have that perspective. So I get why people are so um, interested and invested, yeah. but it's not, you know, it goes beyond gossip to me. Like these people I genuinely love and I hold our friendships and the friendships we had, I hold them so special and sacred. And um, it's it's just, that's, it's probably a boring answer, but. No, but that's how it I'm is. At. That's yeah. like the truth of where you're at. Yeah. And that's all we can ask for is to just hear like why you feel the way you do about things. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to friendships, what kind of friend is Indie Blue? Um, I I have two modes. I'm like, okay. do nothing. So let's sit on our phones and scroll and yeah. not say a word for three hours. Or like, let's do everything. Let's jump in the car and drive overnight to a music festival. And um, I think that's why Tristan and I like just clicked so well. And we traveled so well together is just because um, we can do both so good together. So good. Yeah. What aspects of a friend are super important to you? And do you ever get nervous making new friends now that you have this fame attached to you? Scared that someone might use you or just want the clout, mm-hmm. as the people say nowadays? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely something I've struggled with. I've been burned pretty bad in the past. I think even more than like being used for followers or for um association to me or or I guess maybe that's it I think I think I felt used by people like seeking information from me if that makes sense no that makes I sense. remember one time catching up with a friend I didn't talk to in in a while and for an hour it was just like she was just grilling me question over question over question and h- halfway through I was just like I don't think you actually care I think you're just like you want some gathering juice. up the yeah. intel so you can be the source that's like oh I know everything about her and yeah and I think that's hurtful because I am kind of an open book and I am a very vulnerable person and so I've just learned like trust is so important to me and I think that's why um my circle is smaller at this point in my life like by design it's just because I I just have to trust you and and back to your other question um like what is a good friend to me? It's just total, total trust, and and um, it's the freedom and the safety that I can be myself around someone. And I just think in general, those are the best people in the entire world are people that yeah. like bring out the real you, and where you don't feel like people are gonna get sick of you, or or if you have to perform or please, it's just like 
you love me for me and I feel like safe. free to be yeah myself around so obviously Jackson's one of those people yeah so let's talk about Jackson because your guys's love story is also crazy you guys met in high school you were high school sweethearts he went on his mission came home early right you had talked about in a blog post how you had planned on marrying him. Like when you set him off, you're like, I'm going to wait for him. We're going to do the typical Mormon Utah thing. He comes home early and that kind of puts a pickle and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when he came home, did you still have that mindset of, oh, yeah, let's let's still plan on getting married? Um, Yeah, I I did. But what I didn't know was that the reason he came home was because he – completely stopped believing in the church I thought he was just really struggling with his mental health which he yeah. was but that was you know the main factor yeah. in it um he, and so that just was a recipe for disaster um I I feel like eventually um it just became obvious and we we had to kind of come to terms with us being in really different places with the church. And that is where all our problems started because I wanted to marry him, but it was just like now suddenly there was this huge, what felt like red flag, like, well, I I, I just didn't even think of that as an option, like for yeah. me to marry a non-Mormon ever. And so it was always kind of like a matter of like, well, he's just – lost right now and like we can get him back and so um she needs to pray a little more exactly read the book of mormon a couple <laughs> more times yeah and so that's why we broke up honestly that's when we broke up the first time it was probably like six months after he came home yeah um timing i mean we were so young and had not dated anyone else had not done anything else and we just we just weren't ready to get married but there was also this element of like, I don't know if I can even marry. Like, I don't know because yeah. all my life I've been told that I can only marry a return missionary. I can only marry a strong uh, member of the church. So it just started, it just started a spiral. <laughs> Which is funny. Cause look at you guys now, like that, that's not an issue obviously yeah. <laughs> anymore. So you guys break up, but you, you said in, blog post that like you guys would get kind of back together but yeah. nobody would know and it'd be like this back and forth it was pretty like toxic seeming what was the biggest reason once you kind of left the whole oh I need to marry a Mormon and that wasn't in your mind anymore what was the big reason why you guys couldn't just make it work and mm -hmm. stay together um yeah it was toxic it was very toxic I but it was also just like we were so we were so young and we were so in love and like this, these feelings are so intense and um, we were just such a safe place for each other and it was, I don't even know, it was just like I, there was nothing else, there was nothing else that ever came close and I dated other guys and it was just, I was so scared that my, the rest of my life would just be settling and like I had like a, I had my true love so early on and like the rest of my life I'd be thinking about that. Like I used to like think like, what do I tell my kids? What do I tell my kids someday about my first love? <laughs> like back like in the notebook. We're like, <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, Indy goes into story mode. Like how, <laughs> what's the storyline oh, here? Oh, it's always the story. The drama. Yeah. How can we make this more dramatic? Let's see. Yeah. I think there was, the church thing played a huge part into it. Um, but um, when I look back, it's so obvious why it didn't work. I mean, there was never an environment for our relationship to thrive in or grow in. Um, it was a secret. My parents didn't want me seeing him, um, which just kind of started from a place of, like, they didn't like seeing their daughter sad, and so they didn't want me being around him. But then that kind of turned into, like, me sneaking around and not telling them, which kind of made... Jackson represent not only making their daughter sad, but also like their daughter lying to them. Rebelling. <laughs> Rebelling, yeah. right? So that's kind of how, um, which only just made things so complicated. I didn't ever want to tell anyone when we were back together, which he hated and that was hard for him. And everything was just so unpredictable. I never knew when the other shoe would drop that 
it was just hard for us to commit. Yeah. That and we were never in the same state at the same time. We were just always in different places and um, it just seemed like it wasn't supposed to be, like it wasn't supposed to work out. But on the other hand, there would be moments where, you know, I'm flying home from Japan and I have like a night in LA and we randomly start texting after six months of not talking to each other. And I find out he's five minutes away from me at his friend's house in LA and I'm right there. And then I go see him and I tell him I'm moving to LA and he tells me he lives there. And it's just like little things where like we would, like it was kismet. It was so um, divine the way we would like find each other and um, reconnect. Yeah. Um, So all these mixed signals of like, okay, like this is not supposed to be like this, this isn't supposed to be this hard. And then these other moments where it was like, how are we in the same place right now? Or like how, I don't know, weird things kept happening. And I just ultimately think, I mean, it's hard. I don't ever want to give people the advice, like get back with your toxic boyfriend. Right. I think we are literally the exception to the rule. Yeah. Um, but I also think there was just a lot of outside factors that led to our relationship being so chaotic and toxic for those years. And uh, I'm not ashamed of it. I think that's another thing people try to like project onto me is well, she had a toxic relationship. Yeah. And, like, so She's did, teaching young girls. So did every other 18 year old girl yeah. in America. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, I can't. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm the first to say, like, yeah, those were dark years. When you, got, when you got pregnant, weren't you guys secretly, like, nobody knew you guys were together when you found out you were pregnant. Yeah. I mean, it was, like, enough to the point where, like, half the people I told I was pregnant said who. Like, with who. Wow. <laughs> so that's, but a few close people did know that we had been kind of talking for a few months. And, um. Gotcha. But, yeah. It was so funny. So when you find out you're pregnant, you were on your trip. Um, When you got back, how soon did you tell your family? Um, so I found out in Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah. It was the most hellish way to find out. Well, cause didn't you have like a ton of people, like yeah. followers that went on yeah. this trip with you? Uh huh. We had this, yeah, we had a follower trip and yeah. it was my first night there. All these girls just think I'm such a bitch cause I'm just like in my room crying all night. Yeah. Won't come hang out. And, um. It's like you can tell them I'm no. pregnant. Oh, and, and, and this is the worst part. We go to, like, we take this, like, tiny boat to this jungle in Costa Rica, and um, the guys, like, give, oh, we're, we were at, like, a turtle sanctuary, like, a sea turtle sanctuary, <laughs> and the guy um, working and giving us the run around, he was, like, um, just talking about Zika, the, uh, the uh-huh. mosquitoes, yeah. just, like, over yeah, yeah. and over. You can't be pregnant. <laughs> and I'm just, like, oh, my gosh. So I'm literally covered up head to toe, like, in a hoodie. Literally, like, to hear sweats, like, sleeves pulled down, and I just, like, am, and every, and it's 90 degrees, and everyone's, yeah. like, what are you doing? And this, this girl was, like, why are you, like, all covered up? And I was, like, oh, I'm just scared of Zika. And she's, like, why? She's, like, it only matters if you're pregnant. And I was just, like, mm-hmm. And she's, yeah. like, you know, it just, and she's, like, yeah, it, it just, like, eats the fetus's head and, like, but, and she goes, but it's only, like, if you're in the first trimester anyways. And I'm, like, uh-huh. Like, get me out that's of crazy Good so I'm not pregnant. <laughs> so i sat with that for a week it was so hard and then um the day i left i wrote my parents an email oh so you emailed them that. i emailed them. i actually think i knew this and okay. i'd do it again yeah <laughs> um because you had told jackson obviously over mm-hmm. the phone mm-hmm. so you email them did they, like, immediately call you and be like, what the fuck, Indy? Or did they email you back? <laughs> no, they emailed back. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay. Uh, I mean. We are extremely you know, disappointed. I love. My mom's an angel. She definitely had a harder time with it than my dad. My dad emailed back and was like, this is the best news ever. Oh, I gosh. cannot wait. Like, this is going to be so great. And. um, In the email, did you say it was Jackson? Yeah. Okay. My mom was definitely, like, she took a long time to adjust to it, but, I mean, I have the best parents, and, um, I mean, we tease my mom about it all the time. Like, you can, you just, and I knew that would happen. Yeah. When I found out I was pregnant, I'm like, this baby's gonna come, and you're going to 
love him so much. You won't even remember this moment, but I will. I will have. I'll be dealing with it in therapy for years to come. (laughs) I'm gonna put it in my book one day (laughs) for sure. So you knew right off the bat you wanted to keep seven. No, I mean I, I definitely. um, It's hard because I, there was this kind of knowing, like this weird knowing that like it was gonna be okay. Um, but that was my first thought was absolutely not like, there's no way we can do this. And, um, we didn't ever get that far into conversation about adoption or abortion. Yeah. It was always just like, I don't think so. And I feel like maybe like a day or two, I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And Jackson the whole time was like, I will do everything. I will help you. Like he really wanted to keep him. And honestly, that helped me a lot too, just because the truth is it's always what I've wanted was to have a baby with Jackson and what he's always wanted for me I don't none of us would have neither of us would have chosen to have the baby then um, right but at the end of the day like I do um love Jackson I've wanted to be a mom my whole life and I'm so lucky that I had a decent financial situation and I had supportive parents and a family and a great support system and um I just feel I feel like we we're, we're so blessed and um and I'm and I'm thankful um I'm just thankful for Jack for being so just supportive and ready for whatever I wanted to do. So you find out you're pregnant, you tell everybody, you know you're going to keep it. So at that moment where you and Jackson like we are committed to each other now. Like there's no going back and forth like we're going to figure this out. Mm-hmm. If baby comes and we hate each other, then we'll break up. But, like, we're yeah. together right now. Um, I kind of. I think the committing committing to Jackson wasn't really the hard part. Like, he – there was no one else. You know, yeah. like, there was no one else. So it wasn't like I had to see my other options right. before I could, like, decide him. It was more of just, like, can we – build a healthy life after all this chaos we've just lived through like is that even possible and like what if it happens again like what if what if we go back to that place of chaos and being on and off and and um so like that was definitely like a fear and a worry I wouldn't say it was like instant um but Jackson and I like the the you know nine or I guess seven months before I had a baby the baby we we really like kind of fell in love like all over again which was so special um and the healing process took years it's still like we're still healing from stuff obviously like there's still little triggers that will come up um but I will say like probably like a month after seven was born I was just looking at him one day in the living room. I was just like, duh, like, of course I'm going to marry you. Like, it just made so yeah. much sense. And I was just like, of course we're getting married. Like, there's no other way. And so yeah. um, I think the slower process was we would we would have the same fights over and over because of all of that shit we went through. So it was like a lot of, a, a lot of like, building trust back in um, – helping each other feel safe again um and just stabilizing our life yeah yeah overall do you feel like one or one of you was more toxic or more of a reason why you guys couldn't make it work before you guys made it work Mm -hmm. um or was it pretty even like you both (laughs) had your shit that you were like oh Uh, I fucked up you fucked up I mean in my eyes it was Jackson of course but it was totally me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And I think because I was so unwilling to accept him fully, and he had already accepted me fully. Yeah. But for me, there was, I mean, even beyond the church, it was just like a perspective thing. It was like, it was so much of like of what other people thought about Jackson yeah. and, and all of this stuff. And, and I think for me, it was like, so easy for me to point the finger at him of like why uh, why things weren't working when in reality it's like the second I you know and and seven was such a big part of it but when when I got pregnant and I was just like okay like this like I'm either in or out yeah 
I accepted him. I accepted myself. And it was like really easy from that point on. And really? then I was like, mm, maybe I'm the problem. Am I the problem? <laughs> maybe. I mean, definitely both of us. But, but. but I do think that if I would have figured my shit out a long time before and just been like, I don't care what anyone else says. It's you and me. We're doing this. Yeah. We probably would have been together a lot longer. Been yeah. Quicker. Um, you have like the craziest pregnancy story because you got diagnosed with diabetes while you were seven months pregnant. Mm-hmm. The nurses didn't believe you. You kept saying something's wrong with you. And they were like, mm, you're fine. Go home. You got life lighted and you deliver seven early. Wait, did you deliver seven at seven months? Seven, seven. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So once he gets home, do you feel like you were able to catch on to motherhood pretty easily? Because you've said you've wanted to be a mom forever. Mm -hmm. So after all the craziness settled down and you got to like be home with him, did it come naturally? Um, Naturally, yes. Like I definitely think I I felt like I knew what I was doing. I felt like this is my baby. I definitely had the mother's intuition. I think I struggled with just trusting myself and second guessing myself. And I don't know if that's because of what I went through with the diabetes or maybe if other NICU moms feel that way. Um, but after he was home, I did have to adjust to that, like that intuition of, I know what to do, but then this like second guessing of like, wait, but do I? Yeah. Or like, am I doing this right? And especially when you have other women and nurses, right? Yeah. Professionals. How long was he in the NICU for? Like a month and a half. So yeah, that's a long yeah. time. And these women like know his cues. Oh, they know everything, right? And like, so it was almost like I felt like a little kid. Yeah. Being like, okay, like teach me how to teach me how to be a mom. This. Yeah. You know, so I think I had to um, really work through that. Reestablish after, the yeah. confidence. Yeah. So diabetes. You are, how are you, first of all? Like, how do you feel at this very moment? Um, physically good. I, diabetes, like, it sucks. I can imagine. It sucks, you guys. Like, I don't, I don't know if there will ever be a day where people are like, how are you and your diabetes? And I'm like, good. I hate it so much, but, um, it's more of like a, emotional struggle at this point I think I struggled physically for a while and now it's just like really accepting that this is an everyday thing I think it's hard for me because it feels like you know most sicknesses right like you you heal to get better or like you you're working to heal you're working to um but like there's no cure to diabetes (laughs) Yeah, and coming to terms with that is just like, oh, this is going to be an everyday thing. Yeah. Or like, what if I die from this? Or every single thing. And and then on top of that, just like how much criticism I get for it. It's become such a pain point for me and just such a... Uh, I mean, it's already traumatic. as It was already such yeah. a, a point of trauma being diagnosed in that way. And then just having to deal with it and deal with so many... um hurtful opinions and um, comments and perspectives it's been really hard and I'm yeah I'm a million times better than I was a year ago or two years ago Um, I just graduated a little coaching program that was fun that was great and um, so I feel like more knowledgeable like um, than I did in the past but yeah, it's it's an everyday thing and it and it's definitely like hard on my mental health. So do you think it's is it something that you think you'll ever be able to like you said, I don't know if I'll ever be able to have a day where I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm good. Do you really feel like there's you'll never be able to fully be like, I'm I'm okay, I got this, I'm not overwhelmed mm-hmm. or do you think this is something that mentally it's gonna be hard for you forever? No, I mean, I'm being so dramatic. Like, I think I'll be fine. I think. And I don't think you're being dramatic. Because <laughs> I would be doing the same thing. Every day I would complain and be like, oh my gosh, this is my life is so hard. So like, I don't yeah. think you're being dramatic. But that I is think, a huge learning curve. Yeah. And and that's the thing is. um, One of my good friends, his name's also Indy. He works with me and he has diabetes. And he's had it for a lot longer than I have yeah. since he was little. 
and it is just like this jealousy of like oh it just seems to come so naturally to you where I it's still so like manual for me like okay check this off the list check this off the list check this off the list instead of just like you just know imp- yeah so but then and, and I think it's because of the online hate and I do have a lot of compassion for myself and it makes me sad for myself when I think about how hard I've struggled and how down I've gotten about myself because of the hate um and it and it clicked for me one day this year where I was just like no one's looking at a seven-year-old getting diagnosed with diabetes and being like why haven't you figured it out yet yeah even their parents who are like helping them no one's looking at their parents and being like oh you're not perfect at this yet yeah it's so complex it's a minute by minute thing you know it's so um unpredictable and I just realized that I was expecting myself to have it all figured out because other people were yeah um and I'm just brand new into this I'm really brand yeah. new. yeah well like you said your friend Indy mm-hmm. like he had it when he was a kid so yeah. he's been he's had doing, so much time yeah, yeah like he's basically a senior at this like <laughs> yeah. he knows everything yeah, I'm just starting out and yeah you've only been diagnosed for seven's what three years old yeah like that is so fresh mm-hmm. so and, and fresh. people don't understand that your your pancreas works for a while after you've di- you're after you're diagnosed it's called a honeymoon period and mine lasted almost two years Oh, so really? it's really been like a year and a half of like intense really try and figure it no out no pancreas like real diabetes so so I'm still just so new to it and I think um I have a, I just have a lot of compassion for myself at this point well you should because yeah. that's a hard thing to go through on the point of mental health you talk about, you know, we ha- you have the haters, the body shamers, mm-hmm. the the Reddit pages, the Instagram. Like, the internet can be a really cruel place. And you've been very open talking about how, like, you've struggled with that. Mm-hmm. When you've gotten to your lowest lows, have you ever been suicidal or had those thoughts of, like, I don't even want to do this anymore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've struggled with depression and um, my mental health for truly my whole life. Um more specifically the last like five years Uh, but it never got really to that point until I would say I would say like my lowest of lows was fall 2021 winter 2023 ish Um, and that was kind of a point where like the body shamers were at an all-time high and people were just making videos about me and so critical of me and um, the Reddit pages were going crazy, and I just remember um, getting sent a TikTok one day, and I was with my assistant, Maya. It was, like, our first um, day of work together. We just met, and we were driving around, and someone had sent me a TikTok, and I click on it, and it's – someone had, like, programmed a street sign to say, I hate Indie Blue, and they put it right above, like, the overpass by, like, my parents' house. So it's, like, my hometown. And – I was just, like, I'm in the car with this girl I don't know yet. And so I'm, like, holding back tears. I'm just, like, okay, keep it together, keep it together. And I just, like, lost it as soon as I got in the car. And I just remember that was, like, because you read the comments and it's, like, oh, I'm so glad you said it. I hate her, too. Like, someone needs to put her in her place. Like, and and it's, like, it's, like, walking into a room of people talking shit about you behind your back. And you're, like, oh, like, it's, it's, like, it's intense. I don't not normal and I just I really hit a breaking point where I was like no matter what I do people hate me like they hate me hate me it's not just like oh I don't like her it's like people have deep (laughs) feelings of dislike towards me and it was so hard for me to find any semblance of self-worth in that time because it was just like they obviously see something in me that I can't or like they all agree on this thing. And so that must be true. And I just had no identity. I had no um, grasp on like self-love and self-worth. And um, I did feel really suicidal and it got, it got bad enough to um, like, that's what actually led me to go seek help at a mental health facility for a few weeks. And 
that was awesome because I was um I was in therapy every day and I was able to unpack like the last six years of my social media yeah with someone who could you know um doesn't know me doesn't know anything about it that could um kind of just put into perspective like how warped my reality is and how this does take such a toll on people and their view of themselves and um their you know their self-worth and um it took me that was kind of I think my rock bottom I that is insane to me that somebody would do that first of all the overpass sign I know were you ever able to figure out who it was (laughs) This is when I knew I found a good assistant because um, a few hours later, I, like, sent it to her because I just didn't want to, like, address that in person. Right. But I, like, sent it to her and I'm like, can you find out where this guy, like, works? Yeah. And an hour later, she's like, here's his LinkedIn. Here's his address. Here's blah, 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 blah. Did you know him? No. But I wanted to, like, show up to his work and um, give him some lonely ghost. Wait, why didn't you? (laughs) I just, I don't know. I should have done it, but. Cause like, I'll like, I want to go fucking fight this guy. (laughs) Like, I just don't understand haters to the point where they feel like it is their duty Mm -hmm. to make sure everyone is on their side, even though it's delusional and it has no real base. It's like, I hate her because I just don't like her and I need (sighs) everyone else. Well, you just reminded me, someone sent me his Tinder profile like months later. And his How bio, old is this man? I was probably like 24-ish. Oh, I don't know. what a fucking loser. Oh, my gosh. His bio was, I hate Indie Blue. <laughs> that was his bio. And so in that point, is it's he just... trying to make merch? Like, what? <laughs> well, the that's fuck? the thing. But at that point, it's just funny, right? So perspective is everything. It's like, I was in such a low place when someone wrote that, and I saw that, that it kind of just... It hurt. It hurt really bad. Months later, someone sends me his Tinder profile. I'm like, that's so funny. Like, <laughs> it shows you, like, oh, literally, it's just a crazy person. Well, and they all it has have nothing to, to do be. with yeah. me. Yeah, they all like everyone on Reddit has really sad lives. Yeah, to be able to just like spend your day picking people apart, yeah. like you have a really sad life. Yeah, but that would be a lot to always feel like you, you know, you're you want everyone to be happy. Like, because are you a people pleaser at your core at all? I'm a recovering. Okay. I've, okay. I've done a lot better this year, um, but absolutely. I think that's been my whole thing is, like, trying to prove people wrong. Yeah. Um. I, like, you, you – I think I forgot to answer your question about, like, is it hard to make friends? Or, no, we did, but I was we just – talk about it. I was saying it's hard because it's weird to go into a friendship where, like, someone know, already knows something or has an opinion of someone else. Yeah. And the other person's just going into it blind. It's, like – a little unequal and and I feel like I'm always competing against people's preconceived notions of me uh and so like in Utah it's hard it's like I'll go to the park and I'm like you know like I'll hang out with like a cute mom and our kids are playing together and then um I'll get a DM from her on Instagram like oh I followed you for years like I didn't want to say anything at the park and it's like that's fine but now I'm like rethinking everything Everything? yeah and I just it it is a little like just off the bat. I just feel yeah. I feel like this position I'm in and and being a public figure in in the way that I am is is just made me like I'm always on guard. I'm yeah. always on guard. I'm, my defenses are always up. I'm I'm just Yeah, that's Yeah. Like when you how many times do you get stopped a day in Utah? Um, or do people pretend like they don't know you and like talk to you and then DM you later? I do get a lot of those. Yeah. And yeah. But, like, it's so hard for me to know. It's so hard for me to know because, yeah, I do get stopped quite often, especially in Utah. Um, but, ugh, like, I was getting, I was literally getting waxed. And this girl is, like, head in my vagina. And she's like, wait, are you in the flu? <laughs> I can tell by your labia. And I'm just like, oh. So, um. Yeah, it's just like an anxiety thing. I'm just like, yeah, uh, but that would be hard. Yeah, I'm literally a nobody, and like that's my biggest fear is somebody 
literally waxing me or lasering me and then being like, I listen to your podcast. And I'm like, now every time you hear me, you're going to think of my freaking yeah. puss. Like, and you're going to tell everyone about it. Exactly. Be like, her vagina is weird. Like, she has the one lip longer than the yeah. other. Or like, it smelled weird or whatever. Yeah. She didn't wipe her butt before she <laughs> got her Brazilian. I saw poop on her butt. Yeah. Like, just like all the things. Like, that would stress me out it so bad. It stresses me out. Which is why people in Hollywood have like specific doctors and specific people because like there's this code that mm-hmm. an honor code almost where yeah. it's like these people do not talk to anybody yeah. else they sign a what is it an NDA, an NDA and like your secrets are safe your private parts are safe that oh I get it like, I fully get it I totally get it yeah so I can only imagine <laughs> that would oh that gives me so much anxiety mm. so let's talk about your wedding really quick okay. because it was iconic and I've never seen anything like it in my life what inspired First of all, the look, mm-hmm. the hat, everything. The f- it was it was incredible. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, there wasn't really a theme. Um, as much as it was just like a list of everything I wanted and everything yeah. I didn't want, and then we just went from there because gotcha. I f- I filmed hundreds of weddings, so I knew exactly like specifically what I did not want. <laughs> And that kind of make it, made it so easy. Um, like, I don't want a Utah wedding, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, and and it was just more of like, yeah, I think themes you can kind of get boxed in and um, limited. And so I was just like, totally. do, it, do whatever you want. Like, I, I wanted, I didn't want to do like a color for bridesmaids because then it's like narrowing it down to like a cute dress. And it's like, just wear anything you want. That's cool. Which... <laughs> It looked so good. Like, yeah. what was, like, the, what would you call the vibe or the aesthetic of your wedding? Oh, my gosh. I don't even know. Help because me. I was, I was looking at it, and I was, like, the first word that came to mind, which is completely inaccurate and not correct, was Bridgerton. And I was, like, this is not Bridgerton I mean, vibes. the hats. But I like, definitely pulled just, the hat Yeah, just, vibes. like, over the top. Yeah. Just, I, but, like, I couldn't think of the actual word. And so, I'm no help. <laughs> I, I can't either. But There's all a, the pictures and everything, I'm like, what What do you call this? Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> this is beautiful, but what is it? I don't know. Comments sound off. Yeah, like, what, what was, was the wedding? vibe? <laughs> what, was, what was it? Did everyone sleep in that mansion? That Like, did you rent the mansion for yeah. the weekend and everyone just kind of hung out there? Yeah. I mean, so I've obviously, like, traveled. And that's my favorite thing in the world is a group trip. Like, yeah. in the world is just getting all my friends together piling in a sick house or even a cheap motel and just like hanging out and so for my wedding I don't know I just think weddings can be so stressful for other people where it's like you know it's like kind of just like a like a to-do where I was like Mm -hmm. I want to make it like just I want it to be like a little vacation for everyone so nice of you but we are also getting married and there's so everyone like the whole bridal party stayed in the house and my family um stayed in the little Airbnb down like the road. Like, we're going to be a little yeah. psycho crazy wild. So maybe you, like, go away for a minute. Mom, I don't think you want to see the things that we're <laughs> going to be came. doing. On the first night we were there, we had, like, a little welcome party. And they came to um, pick up Seven because he was going to sleep at their house. Obviously. And they were, like, just kind of hanging around for a while. And I'm just like, you want to go? I'm like, I think Seven's probably so tired. <laughs> like, get out. <laughs> this is a slumber party get out mom <laughs> so did everything go smoothly on your wedding day or were there any like hiccups okay. or drama um no and I mean my friends are so good that if there was they would not have told me oh really they would That's have just good. kept me That's so far removed oblivious. From it. um the only drama was the day like the day we left to go to the wedding I wake up at 5 a.m and Jackson just keeps like coming in and out of the room I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, our basement flooded. <gasps> I'm like, oh, cool. Our flight's in two hours. Like, what do we do? Our whole basement flooded. Like, was it finished yet? No. Okay. Luckily, it wasn't finished. Okay, so, that's good. thank God. But it was like we had two hours to like figure that out. And then seven was a nightmare at the airport. Like, type of toddler tantrum where it's like sprawled out on the floor. You're like dragging them. Like, like I'm getting married. <laughs> like actual worst worst yeah. worst behavior and then 20 minutes into our drive 
he projectile vomits all over the rental car. No. We have to spend like 30 minutes like cleaning him off on the side of the road. Um, like three of my nails popped off that I'd just gotten done the ne- the day before. Like, You're like, this is not happening. It was a crazy like 12 hours. Like and the then, lead up. And then literally nothing went wrong after. Well, that's good. It was just like it was just people probably hate me. It was perfect. Like it was so no, that's amazing. It was fun and it was it was just a good time. You did something that I've never seen before, especially here in Utah. Weed <laughs> infused, mar- marijuana infused. <laughs> I don't know how you want to say it. Food yeah. and cake and all the things. Was there anything that didn't have weed in it? Um. Well, so the food didn't have weed in it. It was just the cake. Oh, okay. But then we had a weed bar. Oh, so there was like okay. um, dab rigs and little joints and um, drinks and things. All that stuff. But the, no, so it wasn't like um, everything was weed infused. We had like a normal cake and then a weed cake. Gotcha. gotcha and then we gotcha. had a little weed bar. How did your more conservative family feel about all the weed? They're great. I, I mean, love that. they were such great sports about it. Like they were all just making jokes about it and. Um, if they were weird about it, no one, no one seemed like it. Um, I just think, yeah, I mean, it's not a secret. We love weed, and um, and we don't like alcohol. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I'll drink with my girls. Yeah. I love to I love to party, but I'll always choose weed over alcohol. So when, you know, we're talking about the alcohol budget for the wedding, I was like, I wish we could have a weed bar instead. Yeah. And my assistant was like, we can. It's California. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let's do it. No, that was amazing. And I want to talk about weed because I'm not a weed girly. Yeah. I've done two edibles. I've tried oh edibles my gosh. twice. How was it? Hated it. I'm sure. Hated edibles it. are terrifying at first. Hated it. I hated it so much. My husband, he's a fan. He's like, it's medicine, it's plants. And I'm like, it's a drug. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I love how open you are about it. And so let's talk about it. What's your favorite part about weed and being <laughs> high? Uh, I could talk about this all day um are you high right now yes <laughs> I love I'm it I'm just kidding I love it um I what do I love about weed well so for me weed is just <laughs> what, what do I love about weed <laughs> it's yeah for me it's it's a stress reliever it's um it's anxiety relief it's enjoyable I feel relaxed um it's a little treat at the end of a long day do you like to um, smoke it yeah but, but instead of eating it no i mean it just depends like where we are you okay. know like um the vibe trips like i love to just like smoke a joint with like a group of friends um but for me i feel like it makes me really present you oh, know yeah? it's it, and i get it like weed is not for everyone i i totally understand um but yeah it makes me super in the moment it makes food taste great music sound better just all the um, things. And Jack, my husband, he he's the same way as your husband. It's like it's it's just medicine for yeah. him, which for me it is it's definitely um it's definitely medicine for me too with my anxiety and depression. For him, he actually has pretty significant brain trauma from football. Oh and that's how my husband really? is from lacrosse. So he gets like insane headaches it's and like changed memory his life. issues. Yeah. It's completely changed his life. So he um, it's been amazing for him. Yeah. That's amazing. So would you say that you guys, it's like an everyday, at some point you're either smoking it or you're eating it or you're drinking it or like what's, what's, what kind of marijuana do we have in the indie <laughs> household? Um, You know, it's so funny. I feel like people are so, like the way people view weed and alcohol is so different. Yeah. You know, but like some people have a glass of wine Every night. And, and and no, it's not every night for us, but it's like in the same way I feel like some people have a relationship to alcohol where it's like um, it's a celebratory thing. It's yeah. a end of the night type of thing. It's a date night kind of thing. It's like totally that's um, for me at least um, where I'm not using it to kind of help me get to a baseline. Like I would say that's my relationship to it. Gotcha. It's just like. My little glass of wine. How are you going to teach Seven about it? Drugs in general, yeah. I guess. Um, I mean, I feel like every parent has to teach their kid about drugs and alcohol, whether or not they're partaking themselves. Yeah. 
And so it's like they're gonna find it. They're gonna yeah, see it. And so it's not like I think it's a more intense conversation. Um, I think it's just the same way I'll talk to him about sex or honestly swearing. Even like I think about how I'm gonna teach him about swearing because like God knows he hears me. Yeah. And um, eventually <laughs> we'll start picking up on it. And yes, he and will. I think um. Yeah, obviously you make an effort to not swear around your kids, but you also don't teach them that people that swear are evil and bad. And yeah, I remember being terrified as a kid if I was in the same vicinity as someone smoking a cigarette because I had associated smoking with you're going to hell and you're a yeah. serial killer. Yeah. So I think like there's just ways you can teach your kids like this is for adults. Yeah. It's not for kids. And here's why. And being open to their questions and yeah. um. I just think being open is, is really, and it, yeah, like I said, I'll teach him the same about sex or any, any other, um, intense topic like that. I love that. Have you ever done ayahuasca? No, I have not. Because I want to do it so bad. I was hoping you had done it so we could talk about it it because I wanted to do it before it was even cool. (laughs) I'm talking like back in high school, Chelsea Handler did ayahuasca. Oh, I totally remember that, And like filmed it. And I told my mom, I literally was watching it with my mom, who was like cutest Mormon woman you've ever met. And I'm like, mom, like, I want to do that. And she's Mm -hmm. like, you're insane. Like, she's literally shitting and throwing up. Like, what are you (laughs) talking about? That's literally what's holding me back. (laughs) No, but I'm like, I'm like, it's fine. Like, I just need to open my third eye. Like, I need, I need it. And so I I think about it all the time. But again, the throwing up and pooping, I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. And like, being in like a third world country and just no air conditioning and the sweats. and the, I, I think I would die. Yeah. But overall, I think I need to do it. So well, I was hoping um, you would have some some story no. about ayahuasca. But no, I mean Wesley Christensen has yeah. done ayahuasca. I, li- she, I listened to her podcast. Yeah, listen to her it. podcast. It's great. I just remember when she did it for the first time. She kept saying that she kept feeling like a call. Yes, and like Mother Aya will call you. I haven't felt the call. Yeah. But- I want to someday, yeah. but maybe you're feeling the call. Well, I don't know if it's me feeling the call or I'm just so curious and I'm the type of person where if I put my mind to something, I have to like do it. Yeah. Like it's just like is eating me alive, but I don't know if I could physically like fly to Peru yeah. by myself yeah. and do it. That's like too much for me and my husband has zero desire really? to do it. I think you should. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start researching. I don't know. Have you ever done like microdosing with like mm-hmm. mushrooms? Yeah. That's mushrooms. like a new thing that my friends are doing yeah. like people that are close to me that I'd be like what you're doing that like they say yeah, it's changed it's, their life it's so um powerful for depression and um I mean that's really what Jackson and I like I feel like it was like eight years of therapy and like one intense say. day and and really what it does is like like with Jackson and I for example when we had this um journey together we it was probably like a year after seven was born and like I said, his same fights over and over and over just because we were trying to find this stability and um, we were, he's, he was kind of starting to have a bad trip and we were walking into the forest and I was, I'm trying to help him, I'm trying to calm him down and it's just not working, it's not working and I just like broke, I just broke, I felt like a little kid, I was sobbing and I was like, I can't help you and that's like, all the this pain I felt for the last four years of like watching you struggle and trying to help you and like not being able to and it was like everything clicked for each other and he was just like I get it now and we were sitting there sobbing and like he looked like a little kid to me I felt like a little kid and it was like our egos were completely gone yeah like defenses down and it was not like it was just like yeah, when you do this, it makes me feel like this and it kind of hurts my feelings. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, that's so mean. Like, why would I do yeah, that? And yeah. instead of in real time when you're talking and you're like, oh, you're, you're so yeah, dramatic. Yeah. Or you do that too. Or it, it's like in the medicine you have like, you just are, you're, you see people for who they are and you're able to um, kind of break those walls down and get, and so I think we, that helped our relationship immensely i'm like really want to do it yeah once i heard some of my friends did it and i was like wait you didn't invite me (laughs) rude i want to try okay well 
thanks for talking to me about drugs. Of course, and anytime, babe. All the dumpster deep dive stuff, <laughs> which means it's time for personal trash, where we just kind of talk about the stuff of the okay. week, things that we're liking. Today's personal trash is sponsored by Better Days. I know you have all probably seen Better Days on your For You page on Instagram and TikTok because it's taking over the world. But for real, they are the best tasting greens on the market, in my opinion. Also love that they have a caffeinated version since I am always running on caffeine nowadays. All the products are gluten free and sugar free and made with the cleanest ingredients. I shoot to drink two a day, one with lunch and then one before bed. If I'm going before bed, obviously no caffeine, but strawberry, pineapple, and peach limeade are my favorite flavors. Try it and you will see why everyone is raving about it. Use code weekly trash for 10% off your order at betterdaysco.com. B E T T E R D A Y S co.com. So, do you want to start with your personal trash or do you want me to start? You go first. Okay. So, I watched the Jake Paul documentary on Netflix. Stop, I love him. Have, did you watch it? Yes, and I have literally so hated good. Jake Paul my whole life. But, it was so good. But you know what? I have a soft spot for him. I just want to give him – he's like a troubled I kid. Hug, I want to give him a him. hug. I want to hug him. And just say, like, it's okay. Like, and punch cry. his brother in the yeah. face. Like, cry. Let it go. Like, yeah. So, you don't like Logan? No. See, Logan had that huge – scandal scandal with the forest for those who don't know look it up and i feel like that changed him and no. i you don't think so not for a second that that man is a sociopath really and and i think okay i'm just like so weirdly into i mean not weirdly but like i know a lot about pop culture yeah more than people would think like random niche things logan paul is just an actor He's just an actor, but you can see, like, his real self come in. And I think Jake Paul, like, he's not as good at acting. Yeah, he feels his emotions. They kind of said that in the yeah. docuseries, how, like, Jake is more impulsive and, like, feels And so his I think that's why people don't like Jake Paul and people think, like, oh, Logan Paul's, like, so smart now. He has this podcast and he's so refined. I'm like, no, he's playing you all. And I think that's why I'm more endeared to Jake Paul because yeah. it's, like, he's so hated, but he's also just, like, okay. He's at like, least he's like being himself yeah yeah well and now he's in an industry where it's really good to be hated yeah because yeah, that's true. how you promote yeah. your matches yeah, he's, he's definitely good at his job no i loved the netflix special series whatever you want to call it i was like jake <laughs> you're so cute you can win you can win like he kept just yeah. winning all these fights and i didn't even realize any of this was really going on because i didn't pay much attention to it when it was happening i yeah, would see like yeah. random clips on tiktok being like jake paul thinks he's a fighter and he's not a fighter stupid idiot and i'm like no he is a fighter guys like he is a fighter <laughs> and i'm backing him up i'm putting money on jake paul yeah i can love jake paul. I'm, I'm right there with you girl so i'm, I'm gonna start I'm, sending you stuff i'm glad we can agree on that because and i just want him to find like a, i know he has a girlfriend right now he has a new girlfriend every I know. like five weeks I and know. i never can tell if it's like legit like what he married tana like was that real yeah like i'm so confused by that whole thing yeah i wish they would have done a documentary on that because i would love to know why didn't they why that all happened yeah um but no i I watched that loved that um let's see what else my husband was sick so i was a single mom that sucked if you're a single mom you're incredible i thought i was gonna die um i have like a weird tumor this is how random weekly trash is I have this weird like why didn't you read with that <laughs> I don't even know what it is but my kid literally was like mom you have bubble gum in your hair and I was like what and it every time I get pregnant this little tumor gets bigger <gasps> and bigger and now it's like I my hair can't even cover it. I have to use like brown dry shampoo to like spray paint oh my the gosh, pink is little this dangerous? tumor I don't know so I'm going to a dermatologist for the first time ever tomorrow casually has a little tumor that keeps getting yeah, bigger yeah I'm like <laughs> Please tell me it's just like a weird skin tag and like nothing oh crazy. Gosh, yeah. So that's like a fun little thing it's I'm so doing fun, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else did I put on my my notes here about my personal trash? Um, oh, I'm obsessed with Dylan and Hannah G's wedding in Paris. I didn't see it. It's all over my TikTok I'm for you page. Oh, I haven't been on TikTok in like a year. Girl, TikTok is this where is, I get all my information. Okay, this is my weekly trash. I am so goddamn out of the loop like in my entire life like i get my info from podcasts which is like that's good it's good but 
it's I not used usually to be, real time. I, yeah, it's just like, oh, did you hear about the hurricane? I'm like, hurricane? Huh? <laughs> hurricane Hillary? Literally like, no idea about Hillary Hurricane Clinton? Hillary. What? Like the TikTok sounds like it's, I'm so out of the loop. And I had to find something to kind of replace that void in my life. And you're going to die. <laughs> I've been doing family history. Oh, like family tree, baby. <laughs> Like how they do in this in the Mormon church, it's like when the you Mormon go back, app. when you go back, back, back to do like your baptisms and I am things so for obsessed. Dead people. I'm so obsessed. My mom, um, she had to do a family history course in school. She's in school right now. Okay, yeah. So she, mine's like so set up, and it's like when I'm bored, I just go. I'm like, like how eh. far back can you go? Because some can people literally go to like the 1100s. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, how invested have you gotten i'm so invested i'm so invested i literally like i'll pick a new relative every like every time i'm bored and you can go read about them you can go look at pictures of them and i'm just like finding out about like i i was i was the type of girl like when people ask me like where's your family from i'm like i don't know where is your family from um spain and england okay yeah like that's where most of them are from and so um, like, I even found out by going so far back through my dad's line that Severe was originally Xavier, like, with an X. And then, like, it, it started getting passed down. And then it changed to Severe, I-E-R, like, S-E-V-I-E-R. Yeah. And then it changed to S-E-V-E-R-E. So it's, like, just really cool. Like, you can see, like, at yeah. what point in time, like, your family name became your family right. name. I want to do it. So it sounds, like, nerdy, but oh, I'm that- telling you. I'm having well, a Well, I time. love, like, documentaries yeah. and, like, stuff like that. So I feel like finding out your past, like, history is, it's like, cool. watching your own little documentary yes, of your, like, family life. Yeah. Like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Do they have pictures? Like, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. And a lot of them are really ugly, and it's it's a little scary. Well. Knowing that that's my You're like, my could blood I, <laughs> could I produce something that <laughs> like, looks I like that? I see a little resemblance. <laughs> Awkward. Um, speaking of resembling babies my baby looks nothing like my other two kids oh really i keep thinking the older he gets like i'll see something of my other two kids i'm like where did you come from what about like you and your husband i don't think he looks like any of us and he's so white yeah like so pale he looks like a ghost and my other kids are super tan Mm. and whenever we take pictures with him i'm like he's like glowing (laughs) so fair and i'm like are you, are, gonna, you? are you gonna turn into one of us or are you gonna be like the odd one that like, we're I'm like you have to spray tan you before <laughs> disneyland no truly i'm like what is going on Whoa. that is crazy but genetics are genetics are crazy absolutely insane speaking of kids do you want more kids yeah you i do. do you do um it's like such a topic of conversation for me and jack right now because i think initially i'm like oh like when i'm 26 like i'll have a baby it'll yeah. be a year after we get married and and now I'm 26 and I'm like, I, I'm not ready. Yeah. Um, I think for me, like the only thing is like, I want him to have a sibling, but I'm also, um, totally fine. Like just having this little crew right now. And yeah. I don't know, I go back and forth every day. I'm like, take my ID out. And then I'm like, mm, maybe when I'm like 30. So yeah. I don't know. There's I don't no even rush. know if I want more than like one more. I think if I have a girl next, I'll be done. Yeah. I don't I'll probably try for one more can you imagine another little Gemini indie little girl are you gonna are you gonna try to have a Gemini baby oh my gosh I I feel like that's not really that's like that's like rude to her (laughs) I don't want to do that to her I want to make her a Capricorn yeah Yeah. but like I am just I'm so excited to have a daughter I think oh that I think it'll be fun your baby names are pretty iconic and out there if you had another boy, mm-hmm. and let's say hypothetically, okay. this is a name you're not going to use, but it was in the list, mm. what would it be? Oh, let me think because, oh, okay, so I actually was really, really, like, dead set on this name, and I don't really know if I'll do it anymore, but I loved Sully. Like Sully. A- S-U-L-L-Y, Sully. Like in Monsters, Inc.? Yeah. Yeah. I loved that one. I mean, maybe. Maybe if we have a boy, but that was, like, one I loved. What about girl? For girl, like, I... I have the most iconic name and I don't want to, um, don't share it. I don't want to share it, but I will tell you okay. what's crazy is that this name kind of popped into my head. Um, like a month or two after seven was born, Jack and I were just watching a show and like one of the girls was named 
this name and we just kind of looked at each other and we were like, I really like that name. Guess what? Did somebody name their baby that name? No. I had like 10 million grandmas with that name after doing Family Tree. No way. And it was like not a name that was ever in my radar. I had no idea on my mom's side and my dad's side. I have like several grandmas, direct lines with this name. That's how that kind of happened with Banks, the baby Mm -hmm. I just had. That wasn't a family name. And then we went to a family reunion and we found out that his grandma's uncle's name was Banks and that Mm. his dad's brother name was Banks. That's so cool. Oh, that's crazy. It's just meant to be. Um, But the whole like not telling names, I totally get but I'm the complete opposite. I make sure everyone knows the names I want because then it's And you're end. like, you don't steal. Yeah, because then if someone uh, takes it, I'm people like, you still fucking steal her. Do. And I will tell you that because that used to be my theory. Oh, really? People. Uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of my friends and cousins have babies that I rude. named for them pretty much. That's rude. Because I'm always like, these are my names. So if you take one, oh, yeah. then I know you're a piece of shit. Yeah. And I, I'm <laughs> still going to name my kid that name. And then you look like a fucking idiot because yep. you stole it. So... Yep. Well, I'm done having kids. I'm not having any more. So I don't have to worry about the name there thing. There you go. I'm also like not creative. My names are literally Bentley, I Brooks, love, and Banks. Okay, first of all, Bentley was like my entire life favorite oh, name. Oh, I've always wanted a Bentley. Whether love it was a boy Banks. or a girl. Yeah. Yeah, no. But all the B's really, I fucked up. I shouldn't have done that because. Was that on purpose? Or did you just like it have to do it, it with didn't Banks? It did start that way. Like Bentley was always a name I wanted for a girl or a boy. It happened because I watched The Bachelor. And that was literally I'm not even fucking you're you. joking. That was me. I thought he was so hot. I, was, I saw him at the grocery store the other day. <laughs> I'm like, I got I'm, tea. I got tea. I saw it with his girl, you know, and I was like, wait a second. You guys aren't together anymore. I was literally like <laughs> 11 years old. And I was like, he's so I'm hot. naming my son Bentley. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't he like own Airborne or what something? What a niche little connection. I love this. Yeah. No. So I was like, Bentley. Shout out name. Bentley. Bentley, if you're listening, we love you. Except he was like a. No, he's kind of an ass. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. That's what I remember. But, like, maybe he's good now. I don't yeah. know. He got married. And then oh, yeah, he got divorced. He but I, but I, sheesh, I forgot all yes, about this. But I saw them at the grocery store. Oh, okay. If anybody knows who co-parents. we're talking about, then they know. No, they weren't like co parenting, but it was like they were together, okay. together. Okay. Well, I love her. She's, I, she's, she's such so a doll. Cute. Yeah. yeah. So, where were we going with this? Oh, baby names. So, yeah, I started with Bentley. And then my husband, when we got pregnant with our boy, I wanted to, I always wanted to name one of my boys Ford. Mm. but i was like bentley and ford is two car names yeah can't do that so i had no other boy names i was like i got nothing and he loves the name brooks because there's a golfer named brooks and another name i loved growing up and Look he was that. like you have great names yeah but they're all like buh, 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 buh. <laughs> and i'm like so when i'm like talking i'm like bentley no brooks no banks no <laughs> fuck and it's like the worst thing yeah. i could have ever done to myself yeah but it's too late now and that's just kind of how it's going and yeah. so when i found out i was pregnant again I was like, I think this could be it. I think this one, we're done. Like, I think three's it. And I'm like, I can't do Bentley Brooks and like Josh. Literally. Like, I have to do three Bs. No, I get it. So get now it. that's my life. And what sucks, not sucks, but I got this tattoo. It's a butterfly and it has two Bs in it for Bentley oh. and Brooks. But now I'm sorry, like, sorry, Banks. Sorry. Now, we, but now I'm gonna get seven six five because mm-hmm. Bentley has seven words, Brooks has <gasps> six, and Banks Wait, has five. Wait, that's so creative. Don't say you're not creative. <sighs> I'm creative with other things, Indy, like trash, but like <laughs> not baby names. I'm like Googling top five B baby names. Okay. <laughs> so Any other trash you want to take out that's happened to you? Any things you're loving? Um, What's a normal day like for Indy Blue? Um, A normal day. I am such a homebody. Like I yeah. really. I'm excited to see your home pictures. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We just it did that. So that good. was so fun. Um, I work from home. I all j- it depends on like what I have going on. Um, I think I went into the office yesterday, but um, like I just I love to clean my house. Really? Yeah. I don't like to do that because I'm a procrastinator. So if I'm cleaning, I don't have to like pay my taxes. Totally. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I I like that can come later. I'm turning into just like a little housewife. Like I love to cook. I love to clean. Um. Just like kind of fun little chill time in life right now. Jackson doesn't work. Like no. you guys are just like a family unit all day yeah. long. Yeah, and so that's nice because he um he's so good with seven and so um and and then we kind we we get to hang out. Do you guys you ever know? get sick of each other? Um, not really. Oh, see, so we're both very that. independent people. Um, 
And so, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I, we really do. You guys have your own, I guess that's me and my husband too. We're very yeah. independent. So even if we were home all day, it's not like we would yeah. be like, like we have our on own top things. of each other. Yeah. We'd have our own little things. Like I have my podcast. Yeah. He'd be watching golf. Oh, something stupid. Does Jack have something that you're mm. just like, oh, this is so annoying. Skiing. Skiing. Skiing is the golfing. Like the, okay. I'll hear wives talk about golf golfing. and I'm like, oh, that's how I feel about skiing. And it's, it's ski not, season's coming. He talks about it every day and I'm just like. Because it's, it's not like a little, like, it's like it's a whole day the golf thing. thing. It's this yep. whole day thing. Same with skiing. And then it takes like two hours to drive up. And it's, uh but Are you good at skiing? No, I want to get good, though. Because I think. You can do it. I think that'd be fun to do with him. Um, and seven. And, and seven. cute little yeah. skis. We got him some skis. So this year we're going to, we're going to really take him out. That'd be cute. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cute. I can't go skiing because last time I went skiing, I think I was 10. And you know how you have to wear like the suit and then you like wear long johns underneath because it's freezing cold. And I had to pee so bad and I couldn't get it no, all off. No, 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 so no. I literally at 10 years old, I just laid in the snow <laughs> and I just pissed. And I was like, it's happening. Like in bridesmaids when she's like in the in the street. I'm like, it's happening. And my dad's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I peed. Like I couldn't get everything I off fast yeah, enough. Yeah, that would, that would be enough. So now I have a lot of trauma get, yeah. and I just like can't put on a ski outfit. I don't you even own it. like snow clothes. And I, I live it. in the free, like the winter up here is hell. It's hell. Oh, are you, like, you on top of this mountain? Oh, I can't even imagine. We get snowed in. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. Yeah. And you would think I would own, like, a snowsuit or something. No nope. <laughs> PTSD. Like, I can't. No. <laughs> no. Get one it with needs, like, like a, buttons, a quick like, right zip. in the yeah. crotch. Yeah. 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 Like, the pants. skims. Just little buttons. Yep. Um, let's see. Let me, do I have all my trash taken out that I had to talk about? Oh, I'm on trisepatide. Do you know what that is? No. Is it, like, Ozempic? Yeah, it's, okay. like, Ozempic. Ooh, how is it? Um, I've lost... 10 pounds, which I'm just trying to like jumpstart the weight loss, not yeah. to like be skinny, but to just match my effort. I talk about all the time how I work out a lot, but I totally. don't have a six pack. And yeah. I'm like, that's it, rude. Like, math ain't math in. Like yeah. what's going on? So that's why I started it. And I've been feeling really nauseous this week. Oh. And I'm like, that's not going to work because I have to be a mom. No. So I'm kind of no, no, hoping no. that fades Wait, so a how long has bit. it been? Six weeks. Six weeks. Okay. 10 pounds in six that's weeks. That's good. It's so, exciting. It's a, it's interesting. I feel like are there any other like noticeable side effects? <sighs> Honestly, no. Trisepatide's yeah. a lot better than Ozempic and semiglutide because uh -huh. it's made of two different chemicals. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. know anything. But this this week I upped my dose two weeks ago and I was feeling fine, but this week's been rough. And before you came, I was like, I'm either about to throw up because no. of trisepatide or because I'm nervous to meet Indy. Like I don't I don't know which one. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't throw up, uh, but that's been some trash that's happened this week. It's just this nausea. Uh, I'm like, I don't yeah, like this, so I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll go down in mm -hmm. my dose, but I don't know. But do you have any other trash you want to take out before Trash Top again? Um, I don't think so. I'm All right, then let's do it. Let's take let's take the Trash Top a can topic. I'm ready. I'm ready. Trash Top a can is sponsored by Knott's Pretzels. Indulge in the ultimate snack experience with Knott's mouth-watering stuffed pretzels. Elevate your taste buds with a symphony of flavors from ooey-gooey cheese to savory meats and delightful sweet fillings. Whether you're craving a savory snack or a satisfying treat, their stuffed pretzels have something for everyone. Discover a world of culinary possibilities and take your snacking game to the next level. Try Knott's today by going to knottspretzels.co. You can thank me later. It is K N O T Z P R E T Z E L S dot co for the best stuffed pretzels in the game. See, baby. You pick out of this cute. How many do I have in here? Oh, I don't even have that many. I need to make more trash topic cans. Okie dokie. First kiss story. Oh, what's your first kiss story? Ooh, okay, walk down Who the lane. Who was it with? Um, AJ Coons. Shout out AJ. He was um like one of my really good friends. How old were you? Over the years. I was 15. You're um, so old. Yeah. I mean, I've really only kissed, like, I think I've only kissed five people in my whole life. And Can't relate. <laughs> Not relate. <laughs> <laughs> At all. I was uh, a slut. <laughs> Still I, am. like, wanted to be a slut. Oh. And didn't have the, I didn't have what it took. It's okay. Not everyone <laughs> can do it. It's a hard life. Um, I was um at friend's house, like a boy girl hangout. 
junior high and uh, my friend had like a basketball court in his basement and me and this kid were just down there hanging out and I could tell he wanted to kiss me and I was so nervous like I kept just like trying to like go upstairs because I knew we were alone and I knew like I just was so nervous. Like, did you um, have a crush on him at all? I did. Okay. I did have a crush on him. And it wasn't like, like creepy. Like, no, oh, he's kiss no. Me. I like had a big crush on him. So like, I was excited. I was just so nervous um, that I kept trying to like get out of it. And he, um, I just kept saying like, let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. And he was like, how about if I make this shot, you have to kiss me. And it was a full court shot. Like he stood at the back of the wall and I was like, okay. And he swishes it. And I'm just like, oh. And I was just like, I can't. I'm sorry. And he goes, I'll do it again. <laughs> and he does it again. No way. And at that point, I'm like, oh, we earned it. <laughs> and earned so it. we had a kiss and it was awkward. But then it was so cute. Me and my like best friend, like we just ran outside and we were like jumping and oh, screaming yeah, yeah. and hugging. Girlhood. And it was so cute. And then his mom had to pick us up to take us home. Like, and it was just me and him in the front seat, me in the back, and, uh, just to be young again. Oh, those butterflies. Yeah. I remember those days. I was like 15, though. See, my first kiss, I was 12. Okay. Or no, 12 or 13. It was seventh grade. Okay. And I, Tanner Sansom, if you're listening. Tanner, um, shout out. So we were boyfriend, girlfriend, and we hadn't kissed. And back in seventh grade, like, if you hugged a boy, like, oh, it was like a big talk deal. Talk of the town. Like, yeah. they hugged. Like, oh my gosh. It's, at least in Utah. I don't know if it's like this in other yeah. states in middle school. I mean, some people are fucking when they're in seventh grade. That's not how it is here. Mm-hmm. So hugging is like fucking. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like we've hugged, we've held hands. Next step, obviously, is we kiss, right? So it was after school and we were like sitting there and we were just standing there. Like we both wanted to kiss each other, but we were both so nervous and everyone's kind of like are they going to do it? Like, I wanted everyone to see us kiss. I don't know why. And I was really <laughs> just, like, eager. And my carpool, the guy that was in my carpool, was like, my mom's here. Like, we got to go. Like, come on. And so I was like, fine. And I just grabbed his face and we kissed. <laughs> and I got in the car and I'm like, that was not that special. But it, it happened. And that fine. was my first kiss. And it was 100% on me. I took all the action. Look at you. And yeah. And then he broke up with me on Christmas Eve freaking idiot so rude trash actual trash trash. they really are except for our men our men are great we have good our men men and our sons yes angels yes (laughs) i'm really nervous to be a mother-in-law because i feel like i'm gonna be like my husband my son's the best he needs the best i'm like i cannot be that i know people hate boy moms i'm like i'm gonna tell you you have a boy no really though i'm like i could just eat my kids seven is like such a mama's boy that's how my boys are too well i guess banks i don't really know yet <laughs> you're like yeah well he, i don't even know if he's mine yeah like but <laughs> we're gonna pretend he's mine and he is my boy yeah, yeah. No, for sure well indy it was literally the best taking out trash with you you are you. such a beautiful soul the minute i hugged you i felt calm i was like okay good i'm so nervous like i it's been a minute since i've interviewed somebody yeah and so i was yeah. like not only has it been a minute, but it's someone I've never met mm-hmm. and someone so iconic like Indie Blue. Everyone's like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I'm like, well, stop putting so much pressure on me, okay? Because I'm Oh, my nervous. gosh. Well, you're so good and so, I love your podcast. Well, and you're so nice. Seriously. You're just like. This was, this was so much fun. I and you. I hope that everyone listening enjoys it. I know everyone already follows you, but if they don't, <laughs> they need to because you're the best. And I look forward to all of your blog posts, videos, and I hope that you do start posting more videos and stuff. Because yeah, yeah, I will. You're so good at it. It's like your, you, your thing. Well, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm like, which camera should I be looking at? I'm like, this is TikTok. This is YouTube. Um, but I love you guys and have a good week. And don't forget to take out your trash. Bye. Bye. Bye.